Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Thursday, it's the 13th of January, and we have got some more mods on FS22. We do have an update today for the John Deere X9 2020 US and EU version by Seed Modding. It does say change log, fill, uh, fixed fill volume, fixed brakes, a third pipe option has been added, and the tank capacities have been improved. That was one I didn't review just before Christmas because I kept having the game crash. Um, I'm not going to look at it now because I'm really terrified of it doing the same thing. I'm not saying it was that that was causing it, but like I say, it was, it was happening a lot. So, mods for today. We've got the large water tank by Flusty94. 1.7 megabytes download, two slots on console. You can see it's right here in front of me. When you get water from here, I've just tested it, it does charge you once you've bought it and placed it. And here's the... well, you be the judge, isn't it, aren't you? Uh, this you'll find under Buildings and Containers. If we go along here, we've got the standard in-game water tank, which is three grand, two slots, and charges you. This one does the same thing. It's two slots as well, which goes down to one for any subsequent one. But it's 15 grand. And the other one's a little bit smaller. It's blue, so it's, I mean, again, it's choices, it's, it's hard up to you. Um, but that's where you find it under build mode in buildings and containers. 15 grand, two slots, and it will charge you. That's by Flusty94. Uh, next, I'm going to look at, we've got these. This is the John Deere RTK Stations Pack by Matthew FS. 3.86 megabytes download. Um, three slots for this one, two slots for this one. Nicely detailed. Now, with precision farming on FS19, the RTK stations gave you reduced, reduced worker costs, more efficient and more effective worker kind of AI. Obviously, we don't have precision farming yet. So, in in here, in here on FS22, um, these are supposed to improve the weather forecast. So, increases the accuracy of the weather forecast to which your farm is connected. Now, it doesn't say these have to be placed at your farm i assume you can just put them anywhere on the map potentially they may have to be right next to your farm uh, you'll find these again in the build mode these are under buildings but under tools right at the very end there you'll see the first john deere one is 10 grand the second one is five grand slot counts uh, will come down from three and two to one for any subsequent one you place. It doesn't say you can only place one, so I guess you could place them all over the all, all over the place. Um, but here's the thing: if we go into this menu and we go up and we look at the weather, I'll see if it's changed at all. It may just be me. Maybe I'm just being picky, and it's not necessarily the modder or the mods themselves. But look at the weather forecast: June, July, August, September, October, November, December, 39 degrees centigrade. November 38 degrees centigrade. I'm not sure how accurate the weather forecasting is. I know that's a long way off. I totally understand that. But it should make it more accurate on the sort of day-to-day -day and the more, or hourly as well. Wind speed, wind direction, those kind of things. Anyway, that's the John Deere RTK stations pack by Matthew FS. Uh, next, we have got, well, all of these. This is the sawmills pack by Ola Haldor. I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is 10.73 megabytes download, and we've got a few buildings here. Now, these are the two sawmills, production chain sawmills, from Elm Creek and Obeleron. Uh, this one is the Obeleron one, and the one over there is the Elm Creek one. Because if we go into our regular build mode, he says, and we go to... Oh, Productions and factories. The standard in-game, you know, the standard in-game factories. There's not a sawmill that you can buy and place yourself. You have got the ones on the map, but you don't have any of your own, so you can't add one in somewhere if you want to. So this adds that in. So as part of that, we have got the large sawmill and the sawmill. The large sawmill is the Obeleron one. That's 150 grand, and it's 26 slots. The Elm Creek one, Elm Creek, Elm Creek, Elm Creek, the Elm Creek one is a hundred thousand uh, and that's 25 slots. So what we'll do, let's zoom out a little bit. So that's 
like I say, that's the Obelleron one. That's 150 grand. The Elm Creek one is this one here. That's 100 grand, 26 and 25 slots. So from there, we want to go uh, along to decoration. And if we go decoration and then others, we'll scroll across. We have got the sawmill office. That's this one here. Um, that's 90 grand. And it's a decorative object. It doesn't serve a purpose other than that it says Miller sawmill. So you know you're at the sawmill. Um, that's 18 slots, which then comes down to one. Uh, next to that, we've got two garages. Now, the garages aren't, again, they're not usable. They don't have opening garage doors. These are just decorative objects. So, again, the one from, I think it's the one from Obederon and the one from um, Elm Creek. Five grand each for these. Uh, we have got one there. And the other one is over here. Like I say, the doors don't open. They are purely decorative. But if you want to have a sort of sawmill complex you absolutely can and then on the end of there under decoration we've then got small board stack medium board stack medium bar stack and large bar stack these are one slot each anyway i think pretty sure but they don't yeah one slot each and 50 and those piles are here they're just to add some decorations if you have a load of boards all stacked up somewhere you can now uh with the obelleron one you can take your wood chips out from here because it's part of the production chain, so the process um, is that it makes planks and produces wood chips. Here's our options for the large sawmill. So this is where we can turn it on and off, enable it, but it has to have um, wood. Yeah, just wood you put in here. I'm thinking, what, in, what else is the carpentry that you can, will take wood and planks? This takes wood, produces planks don't worry um, and also same as any production chains we can change storing we can have storing selling or distributing storing if you want the pallets selling if you just want to flog them all straight away and then distributing i don't know does it automatically send them to the carpentry if you own it i haven't tried that actually uh, and then wood chips we can uh, i don't think wood chips distribute anywhere unless you can distribute those to the biomass facility I've only stuck to storing and a few times selling. I haven't really done the distribu distributing. And then the, the sawmill, which is the other one, same options for enabling it to get it running and it requires its wood. This is where you put your wood and then you've got your button you click there for, well, selling it, but putting it into there. And then your pallets of planks will appear here on this one. This one over here, that's where you put your wood that's where you put it into the facility that's where your options are planks here and you can take your wood chip out over there the other buildings and the boards as are here we kind of have a quick look at them while we're in the build mode nicely detailed you know they work and if you want, you know, if you want to give yourself that extra option around a map, it's a brilliant idea. So that's the sawmills pack by Ola Haldor. Uh, next, we have got this. I do like the wording of this. I've got to be careful how I say this. Um, this is hay storage with bale acceptance. Um, and this is by FIB7 or FIB7. 1.23 megabytes download, five slots on console. Now, it says, this Alpine Haystall was upgraded with a bale chopper, so it will accept bales. So, this has a straw chopper added in, and as part of the renovation work, the capacity was also increased. So, the standard in-game hayloft is 20, uh, 250,000 litres. This has been increased to 500,000 litres. You'll find it in the build mode, under silos. The standard one is 63,500 250,000 litre capacity. This one is 63,500, but 500,000 litre capacity. Um, like I said, it's only five slots, pretty handy. And the great thing about it as well, you can bring your loose material here, but it will also take bales. And when I put the bales to it, it does a kind of, you can hear a 
sort of turns on. So it chops them. So the question may be asked, well, why would you go to the hassle if you've got straw on a field or hay in a field, why bale it, then bring it here and chop it back in here when you could get a loading wagon or forage wagon and bring it loose anyway? Well, there's a few times when that won't necessarily be the case. If you've done a baling contract, you might have hay bales. So you get bales from that contract, you can bring them here and store them, but it doesn't eat into your bale limit on console because you'll have them stored loose in here. Um, what was the other one I was thinking of? There was an, another very good reason why you might have bales. Oh, you might have bought them. <laughs> you might have bought bales um, from the store. I mean, I know if you've got a binding silo, you can do it, but you might have, might have bought bales. And again, you don't want to be eating into your bale limits and that kind of thing. So you decide, you know what? Or you might have just done a load of baling and thought, you know what? I'm going to store it instead. You might just change your mind. Um, but having a 500,000 litre capacity anyway, if you just use it as a hay loft without the bale chopper, absolutely perfect. Um, so that's the hay storage with bale acceptance by Fib7. Um, from there, we have these. These are the Concrete Rolls Pack by Realistic Farmers. Uh, nine slots for the first one of each of them. Um, and there's a warning that comes with this as well. We have got the CR190 and the 190X, which are these ones over here. And then we've got the CR290, which is the larger one here. Now this one is designed to be used on its own. It does say not to mix them. This one does have the option of when you get the roller, you can have the roller on its own or you can have it with the side attachers so you can attach more rollers to it. Now you could get three of these, have one there, one there, one there, and then have another couple of rollers. You can kind of keep adding to them. And these are designed for your grassland work. So when you've, now obviously my grass hasn't been cut. When your grass has been cut, to add that fertilizing state in, you can roll over the field and it will give you that fertilizing state, which I'll show you. If you've got grass that's growing, it will it will take it back a growth stage. So you need to be careful with that. Um, the other thing to be aware of is these aren't, you don't turn them on or off and you can't raise or lower them. So transporting them, if you're going to roll them along the road, it goes at seven miles an hour and it takes a bit of time. The sound effect is amazing. Sounds like concrete rollers. I mean, I know that's hard to explain, but you know, it does, it does sound right. Um, yeah, <laughs> these you'll find under tools and under grassland care. So the CR190, 190X, five grand, only requires 30 horsepower, I think per one, 1 1.9 meters wide. So that's how it comes standard if you just want one of them. If you want one like that, so you can attach more to, and you can, um, if you'd have like three or four or five, whatever you want to have, you can put them in line. You've got a pin in the middle as well, so you can line them all up to transport them, then unpin them and hook them on the outsides. Um, and then when you want to add your extra ones on, you just take those side bits off and those are your, your added rollers. So those ones are designed to all work together. Uh, the CR290, nine slots on both of these come down to one for any subsequent one. 5,500, 2.9 metre width, requires 35 horsepower. And that, like I say, that's designed to work on its own. So what we'll do... I roll over the field, I'll show them if these don't turn on or off. I don't raise or lower. If I go over the field now, it will take the grass back. But if we check on the map, you see there we've got the uh, fertilizing state has gone on. Now, if you've just cut the grass, you normally get a fertilizing state then you do that again you should get another one or in the first growth stage once the grass starts to come back you can roll it and you'll get your second fertilizing state uh, for your grass fields you can fertilize them with regular fertilizers and stuff like that but obviously these don't cost anything once you've got them there's no cost for getting that fertilizing state but that's just the thing to be aware of if you have got fully grown grass like this or you go past a field that you own or crops or it can take them back a little bit in fact it can destroy them completely so just be careful that's all 
Um, that's the Concrete Rollers pack by Realistic Farmers. Um, next up on our list, we've got this, the PB30X1. That's right, isn't it? Yes. By Blend Art, Kolchosnik Jr. and TT Check Modding. These are 9.09 .09 megabytes to download. There are three in this pack. There's a 3 meter, a 5 meter, and an 8 meter. This one I've gone for the 8 meter. It's a few different options. I do like this one because you've got it's a lighter chain harrow on the back, but it's got um, tires on it to weigh it down. We'll look at the different options on it. This is a shallow cultivator, which again I'll show you it being used in just a moment. So you'll find it under cultivators on the very end. We've got the PB3031, the 3 meter one. Three slots, 3,000 to buy. The options are the same on each of these, so I'll, only sh I'll show you on one of them. We've got the PB3051, which is the 5 meter. Uh, that one requires 40 horsepower, that one requires 70 horsepower. I think the speeds they run out the same, it's nine miles an hour for each of them. That one's six grand. And then we've got the PB3081, the eight meter. That's nine grand, requires 120 horsepower. So options available. We can have it like that with a heavy harrow. We can have it with a middle harrow, light harrow with tires, light harrow or back to heavy. Now, as far as I can tell, that doesn't make a difference. It's still a shallow cultivator, but it's just the look if you want to go for something different main color anything on this palette here changes the frame design color changes the front um teeth if you want to call them teeth the scrapers at the front then design color changes the harrow section or the yeah the drag section on the rear What I do like is the movement on them, the chains and everything moving. The animation on that is really well done. So with shallow cultivating, you shouldn't get any rocks. There we go. Eight meters, shallow cultivator. Rock snaps, who treat that one? Very nice, the PB30X1 by Blendart, Kolchosnik Jr. and TT Check Modding. Next we have this, the Fortrit B352 by AAA Modding, 3.93 megabytes download, three slots on console. This is a disc harrow, as you can see, under disc harrows. Seven grand. Slot count will come down from three to one. So 2.1 metre and requires 80 horsepower to run. Standard is Fortrip Blue. You can have the B352 Brown or the B352 Green. Those are your options. This being a disc arrow will bring stones. That's interesting. A disc harrow that doesn't bring stones. Let me just check that. A cultivator prepares seeds for sowing. Now that's interesting because all the others say disc harrows. It does say for shallow cultivation. Oh, no stones. Sorry, that's my fault. For some reason, I had it in my head that the disc harrow was um, the same as a regular cultivator. So many different options now. My mind is frying on a daily basis. Oh, there you go, shallow cultivating. Um, that's the Fortrit B352 by AAA Modding. Next up, we have got this. I'm like a goldfish, and my memory is like three seconds. I don't think that's, that's a true fact, I don't know. I'm constantly but surprised by things that shouldn't be really. Um, this is the Sepi MS9 base, as it says there. This is a flail mulcher. 
It is 6.18 megabytes download, four slots on console. It's by Agra Design Austria. It's got a few different options with connection. And what I like about this is you can drag it behind like the other mulches. I'm just trying to think, I'm not sure if there is another one that does this, but this one does, so regardless, this one will do it. You can drag it behind, or with the option to have two attachments, you can put it on the front of a vehicle and you can front mulch. Actually, I think there might be another one that does it. Anyway, regardless, this one does do it. So we hook it up. You can just about see the stubble on the, on the ground there. Turn it on, drop it down. And as we go, is removing that only a small amount of stubble for the crop was on earth. I think it was wheat before this. Disconnect it. So you could do your um, your mulching and then your cultivating directly behind it if you've got another one the same size. But with it on the front as well, that's the job. go so this you find under mulches I'm just thinking oh maybe that one does yeah possibly anyway it's here on the end <laughs> the S9 base 7,000 to buy slot count will come down from 4 to 1 2.8 meters wide so our options we can have design color a uh, design and color new design and color old Design old and black. Back to design and colour new. Then we've got warning signs no or yes. So we can have our warning signs on there. Attach a one tank. Attach a one plus tank. Attach a two tank. Attach a two plus tank. Attach a both tank. Attach a both plus tank one. Attach a both plus tank two. Then back to tank one. There we go. Requires 100 horsepower. Flail mulcher. Very nice. Uh, next up we have got... This is where things might get a bit dicey. We have this. This is the MANTGX 6x4 tanker truck by Tark C007. 9.49 megabytes download, 12 slots on console. This is a 24,000 litre tanker. This will take, I think, pretty much every liquid. I think it takes everything. Um, diesel, death, water, milk, liquid fertiliser, herbicide, digestate. I think it's a slurry as well. Nice looking mod. A few options. I'm hoping this doesn't cause many issues. Uh, you'll find it under animals, not under trucks or lorries on the end there. Uh, slot count will come down from 12 to 1. 640 horsepower. We can change the main colour. Same thing on that palette, which does the cab. Or does the top part. Uh, hang on. No, that's right. Does the cab. I'm thinking of the next one. <laughs> Design colour, we have stainless steel or chrome for the tank on the back. Rim colour, we've got chrome or we've got silver for the rims. And then we can change the number plate if you wish to. Obviously that says gator because we've got the gator to come. Those are your options. Let's hop in. Lights. There's no beacons on this one. Horn. Hang on. There we go. Mirrors sorted. Um, nice detail inside. Mirrors when they're not flickering, let's say. If you need to sort out the flickering mirrors, just go into something like a big bag. Click on it, then come back out, and it should have the mirrors sorted. I don't know how that works or why it works, but it does. And then deliver whatever you want to deliver, wherever you want to deliver it to. There you go. The MAN TGX 6x4 tanker truck. That's by Taxi 007. Next, we've got the MAN TGX 18500 4x2. This is by Cashdan 18. 
This is 9.74 megabytes download, 10 slots on console. This is the one that you can change the button. I was thinking, that's weird, why have I not got the option? It's this one. You've got two different colour options, so you can mix and match or have them both the same one here if you want to. This one, you will find under trucks. On the end, 120 grand, 500 horsepower. We've got mud guards on the back, type 1 or type 2, so you can have a solid mud guard over your tyres if you want. Spoiler, we've got no... Uh, we've got fairings on the side, fairings and spoiler or back to no. Wheel setup, we've got standard or it says forestry on that rear one. Actually, if we go back to, there we go. And then come back down to there. Just changes the tread pattern. It says forestry, it's not overly chunky, but it changes the tread pattern. Uh, main colour does the top part of the cab, like so. Design colour does the bottom part of the cab. Rim colour, chrome or silver, and then licence plate option. Very nice indeed. Now, when we hop in, start up. This one also doesn't have beacons, but there's your lights, on or off. There's no side lights on this one. Horn. But we do have, is it L1 and white stick up and down? We can raise and lower the rear section just a little bit. If we need to go over something a little bit... I have been right down from the slam your lorry. There you go. There's no doors or windows that open. It's done the same thing again. There we go. I do like the cab movement on this one. Even the side to side. There we go. The MAN TGX 18500 4x2 by Karstan. 18. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. And it's this, the John Deere Gator Pack by Black Sheep Modding has made its way over to FS22. Some nice options and features and equipment on this, which we'll have a look at as we work our way through. We have got um, six by four and a four by two. So the six by four, four by two, Different colour options, different backs. Uh, that one has got uh, a snow plough on the front of it. That one is a leveller. Like I say, we'll have a look at them all. Um, bail back on that one. Uh, that one's got a container back, 2,000 litre capacity. But you can have it like that. For forestry, it does have straps as well. Um, obviously, I've put olives in that, but you don't have to. You can put logs in it or whatever you want. Stick bales in that one as well if you want to. We've got a three point link rear we have got a sprayer that's the 32a it says 32a spreader but it is a sprayer that will spread oh, I can't remember the width is but we'll check that we have got the fertilizer spreader the 10 cuft gator fertilizer that will go out to 10 meters that does lime as well that's got lime in it so that's a fertilizer or lime and uh, then we've got the salter the CUFT 10 meter salt spreader as well. So a few different options to be looking at. That's why it said BSM Gator on the number plates. So under vehicles, we go down to cars. The six by four is 15 grand. The four by two is 14 grand. Uh, slot counts on those. I didn't actually make a note of the slot. Oh, yes, I did seven. Seven slots each for the first one. I think the options are the same on both, so I'll show you options on one of them. We've got configuration standard, 600 kilogram weight, 900, 1200. Then we've got protection one, protection two, three, four. Adds all the extra bars on. Five puts a uh, uh, attacher ball on the front. And then we go through this, the same options for those extras. Then back to standard again. I think we'll go with that one. 
Uh, we've got the option of Trelleborg. These don't have any other tyre options, so Trelleborg, that option. John Deere, I do like that one. We've got Michelin, and we've got a Nokian option. Then we've got Model 1, Model 2, windshield. Model 3, frame, lower windshield, double windshield. Then we go to light bar, lower windshield, upper windshield, canopy, windshields, light bar without windshields and canopy. So it goes through a whole load of different options. Twin lights rather than light bar. Doors on as well, light bar and or side lights and light bar. Uh, then back to Model 1 again, so quite a few <laughs> options to choose from on there. Beacons, no. Left and right or off again. Additional lights, yes or no. And then we've got a 25 km per hour version, a 40 km per hour version, or a 50 km per hour version. We can change the main colour to one of those. Design colour does the seats. We have them yellow or black. And then our rim colour, yellow or black. So if you want to go for a more kind of military type version. And then the option to change the number plate. That only has a rear option for number plate, not a front one as well. Um, and then all the backs are then separate. So like I say, the options are the same on the other version. But what we need to do now is go to our tools. Under trailers is where you'll find the skip. That's 2,000. Slot count is 3. That will hold 800 litres of any of those crop types down the bottom. We've got the option. Oh, I thought we had an option to change the colour on that. Oh, that's a worry. Hang on. Yeah, that's oh, that worries me now. So, right, forestry, yes or no. And then main colour, any one of those. So that's for that option. For the bale option, we go to bale loaders. 1,500, slot count on that is one anyway, the bale tray. We can change the main colour, again, to one of those. does have straps, as you can see, because I've got the bale on the other one. Uh, we've then got the three-point lifter, which is under miscellaneous. 1,000 to buy, that's two slots, which comes down to one. Again, we can change the colour to any one of those three options. Uh, what was next? Oh, yeah. Like I say, it says spreader, but it is the sprayer. If we go to tools and sprayers, five metres, that was the width of it, because um, it's got the bars that fold out. Again, options on colours, changes the frame. Tank stays yellow, bar stays um, uh, black on that. 400 litre capacity. And that will do herbicide or liquid fertiliser. We then go to our fertiliser spreaders. So the 10 CU FT Gator 30, uh, 2,500, slot count on that one is 2, and that will hold 1,000 litres. Again, options on colour. Then we go to winter equipment for the salter. There we go on the end, 10 CU FT Gator salter. Again, 1,000 litres capacity, 2,500 to buy, two slots comes down to one. Now, there under winter, we've then got the X250, which is the uh, snow plough on the front of that. That's two slots, which comes down to one. Main colour on that, we've got quite a few options, including the stainless steel one, which is what I went for. But again, whichever option you want to go for. And then finally, we've got levellers. So that last one there, the X250. Did I say X250? Sorry, the S250 is the other one. This is the X250. Um, same thing for our options for the leveller. I think that's all the options. So this one, horn, beacons, lights. If you put the extra lights, you've got the indicators there on the front. Um, if I go with the snow plow, L1 and right stick up and down raises and lowers it. R1 and right stick. No, L1 and R1 and right stick side to side swivels it so you can push your snow out the way whichever way you want to go there's no doors or windows it does sound good though um, unloading so whatever you've got in the back of you can unload 
it does also have straps so if you want to put logs and stuff like that in it or anything else you could probably stick a pallet in there or even if you want to put a band in there interior is nice and tidy sounds like a lawnmower but I like that 31 mile an hour there's no slouch over the ground oh, stops on a dime as well uh, yeah the light bar pretty cool so let's drop that off drop that off so we probably should have gone back a little bit further definitely should have gone back further and then this one the bail option I've gone for the open cab on that one beacon to the side puts it on a stalk if you don't have the frame the leveler on this one So the other one was the plough, this one's the leveller. So this one go up and down, but it doesn't go side to side. If we do, is it one R1? No, R1, we've got tilt on this one for the leveller. The other one doesn't have tilt, this one does have tilt on it, like so. Uh, if we want to unload the bale, we get to our destination, we haven't got the strength to lift it off. If I do the straps off, L1, R1 and unload. Please unload. That's weird. Oh, unfold bell trailer. L1 and X. We'll get rid of the bale nice and neatly for you. Very nice. Uh, disconnect that. So. The three-point link one, well, as you can imagine, it just means you can you can either move or use, I say use, three-point link equipment. Depends on the weight of it. There are some weights on the back there. You can try. You can try all sorts of stuff, um, but it does make it a bit more versatile having a three-point link on that one. The first size of sprayer, five metres. Unfolds the boom. The way you go with your fertilizer or herbicide. The flow rate isn't too bad on that either. I know it's only five meters wide, but I think you'll get a fair bit out of it considering it's only a 400 litre tank, which is pretty impressive. And then we've got the salt and the fertilizer one do the same thing, but there's something odd about this I just wanted to show you but just to say not to worry because it does work. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So this one's got lime in it, but it will do fertilizer as well. Out to 10 meters. So if I stick on now, I know it's not gonna put it on the ground, but that's your 10 meter spread. But also we can change that spread width. So L1 and R3, but watch what happens top left. It doesn't bring it in from the outside. It all goes to the left for some reason, but don't worry, it will. So if I come down a couple and then turn it on, it's not like it suddenly starts doing it from, you know, you get part of it coming out one side and part the other. That's when it's narrowest. So it will still spread exactly how it should do. It's just not showing up top left for some reason. Not quite sure why. But again, flow rate on that isn't too bad, really. I do like the fact that even though this is completely open, it's still nice and quiet in here in here on here but there you go I think that's everything i'm not going to show the salt one salt one does exactly the same as this one does um but there you go that's pretty cool i like that the john gear the john gear the john gear gator back the john deer gator pack um has made its way over from fs19 and that's it for the mods for today i just want to finish off by saying i haven't mentioned this in quite a while don't forget mr p merch is available there's a link in the description there's also should be actually on the side of the description if you're interested in picking anything up mr p related plus tomorrow friday there may not be a mod review as i'm out with mrs city p tomorrow evening um, it depends what time mods get released and whether I get a chance to get them done before we go out. But I just thought I'd let you know because I know some people will wait for me to do the mod review and I don't want you to hang around waiting if one doesn't appear. Um, if it hasn't popped up by 7 o'clock, 
there's not going to be one. So just so you all know. I um, hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.